There we go. And now I'm streaming Return to Monkey Island. I actually better change the... Um, just changing the, the, the label on the stream. and stuff. Okay. So I'll play this for an hour or so. I guess I can put my controller away. This is going to use the mouse. View the scrapbook if you are new to Monkey Island or need a refresher. Well, I am not new to Monkey Island, but hey, want to see my mighty pirate scrapbook? For the sake of the, with my adventures, for the sake of the audience and a refresher, let's look at it. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a mighty pirate. In the old days, you became a pirate by completing three trials to prove your worth. Oh, there's there's things. Ever since I was a kid, that's me, Guybrush Streetboy. Okay. In the old days, you became treasure hunting is important for any pirate. This is when I met Elaine, the love of my life. She was governor at the time. Mastering sword fighting was more a matter of wits than agility. Mastering sword fighting was more a matter of wits. The pirate leaders were in charge of the three trials, acting as judge, jury, executioner, and devoted grog tasters. The test of thievery involved breaking into the governor's mansion. The security was heavy. Things took an unexpected turn while I was working on the three trials. Elaine was kidnapped and taken to Monkey Island by the nefarious ghost pirate LeChuck. I scraped together a crew. Carla, Otis, and Meat Hook joined me on my voyage to Monkey Island to save Elaine. LeChuck thought he was in love with Elaine. My first ship was the Sea Monkey. I bought it at Stan's used ships with a letter of credit that I, um, sort of falsified. My first ship was the Sea Monkey Island was a steaming volcanic mystery, covered with jungle and not found on any map. On the island was a gigantic monkey head statue with hidden catacombs underneath. You had to brew a special potion just to find Monkey Island. And I made some substitutions, but it got us there just the same. There were some people living there who claimed to be cannibals, but I think it was just a show for the tourists. LeChuck's ghostly ship was anchored in a lake of lava hidden beneath the island's surface. I met an old castaway there, Herman Toothrot. He and the locals wrote a lot of indignant letters to each other. The monkey head opened with a special key that you stuck in its ear. We wound up back on Melee Island for the stunning conclusion to my first big adventure. I made it to the church just in time to stop the wedding. Or so I thought. It turned out Elaine already had everything under control. How does she do that? It was the beginning of something magical. By then, I had learned that ghosts like LeChuck are vulnerable to root beer. But just trust me, it works, okay? I defeated LeChuck, and he basically exploded. Uh, these are from the time I went to find the treasure of Big Whoop. The map to the treasure had been torn into four pieces, which, let's face it, is about as piratey as it gets. I met my good friend Wally, who makes maps, and I stole his monocle. Good times. The mysterious voodoo lady at the International House of Mojo taught me to make a voodoo doll, which came in handy more than once. Again, it came down to just me and LeChuck at the end. He was using magic, but then, so was I. Elaine always seems to know when I need her. One time, Elaine got turned into a statue. Well, LeChuck was behind it, of course. The guy never gives up. The fact that he turned her into a statue tells me LeChuck doesn't really love Elaine. He thinks of her as furniture. 
It was around this time that I met Murray, the allegedly all-powerful demonic skull, after a rousing sea bath. I erupted a volcano on purpose. There's not a lot I wouldn't do for Elaine. I got buried alive. Oh, and the way he uh, erupted the volcano was amazing. He was, it was the same cannibals from before. And uh, they wanted to give an offering to the, the volcano god. But the volcano god was lactose intolerant, so he dropped in a giant wheel of nacho cheese. Things backfired on LeChuck, because Elaine and I got married when it was all over. Game, set, matchmaker. This was a great day. Though in retrospect, we shouldn't have had the scum bar handle the catering. Elaine and me together forever. The daggers are symbolic of cutting through troubles, I think. This is the daisy we stomped on together. Wedding traditions are weird. That's either Elaine's wedding veil or my handkerchief. We got them to match. I don't know why you have to have candy-coated almonds at a wedding, but apparently you do. I wrote a great haiku for the wedding invitation. Oh man, this was that crazy time LeChuck teamed up with an Australian billionaire and tried to use a mystical talisman to make Elaine his bride. The ultimate insult wasn't really ultimate or even an insult at all. Or was it? Uh, that has, goes back to the first game, the sword fighting involved insults. It was insult sword fighting. The key was to give the right comeback to an insult so that you gain the upper hand in, in the fight as like a distraction. Everything started because they thought Elaine was dead, so they held an election to replace her. LeChuck and I battled it out on a grand scale that time. I made a goofy monster out of prosthetic body parts. It didn't help with anything, but I had fun doing it. LeChuck and I battled it out on a grand scale that time. Then there was the time I accidentally let loose LeChuck's pox over the entire Caribbean. Or so it seemed. I had to wear a hook for a while. It came in handy. The death card doesn't usually represent literal physical death. Except when it does. So flighting, basically? I don't know what you mean by that. I went on trial for my life on four separate charges. I defended myself, of course. Love did win out in the end. Morgan Laflade betrayed me, even after we bonded inside a giant manatee. Wish Elaine wasn't fooled by LeChuck's human form any more than I was. Oh, here's that voodoo doll from the end of my Big Whoop adventure. I defeated LeChuck with this. His leg came off as easy as tearing a loaf of bread. Okay, that's about it then. Uh, I just want to check the settings then. It's a Norse thing, it's insult fighting basically. Okay, maybe I'll look that up. It's, I, am, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the inspiration then. Speaker's name, yes. Sure. Writer's cut, more blather, worse pacing. Ah, uh, I'll leave it. No. Text and speech. Okay. Let's get started. Challenge mode with all the story and all the fun, but with casual puzzles for the busy on-the-go player. Hard mode, or puzzles, harder puzzles, the full monkey for the pro adventure gamer who wants it all. Hard mode it is. I've played Monkey Island before. Picking on me? All right, 
All right, I promise. Anything. Just put my leg back on. Hey, you kids. You're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's goof on those two. Pretend they're our parents. <laughs> yeah! Sorry we ran off. You were probably worried about murderers and ne'er-do-wells. Don't worry. <laughs> I found them. <laughs> <laughs> um, come on. Let's go. Let's pretend I have powers that make lightning come out of my eyes. Ah. It's so lifelike. Ah. I wonder if it's real. Sorry, boys, could you stop following us? It's creepy. Yes, yes sir. sir. Come on, I saw a scurvy dog shack back there. Scurvy dogs. I've never had one of those. No way, you have to try one. It's the best thing you'll ever eat in your life. No fooling. Wow. Wakey-wakey, Mr. Pirate! Um... Hello? Boom! Ah, he's dead to the world! So, for those unfamiliar with Monkey Island, it's... point-and-click adventure, pirate-themed. This one seems to be taking place Island, after Monkey Island 2. That was bigger than my head. Uh, cause like, this, this is directly after the ending of Monkey Island 2, so... I'm wondering if it takes into account 3 and 4. And five. The scrapbook showed stuff from those games, but this is the ending of my Island too, so I don't know. Sounds real. Hey, Chucky, get ready to run. I guess they don't like visitors. Let's go next door and get scurvy dogs. Uh the ending of Monkey Some Island 2 basically involved them coming out of this stuff. amusement park as kids. Like, that's Guybrush as a kid, and that's LeChuck as a kid, I guess. LeChuck is the villain. What should we do next? We gotta get to Scurvy Dogs. I, I can't believe you never had one. Hmm. I once had the hiccups for four days straight. The words don't look like words. But there's a picture of a scurvy dog. Those glasses are thicker than the layer of grease on the floor. <laughs> you kids better have money. Uh, yeah, we've got all kinds of money. Can we get a couple of scurvy dogs? Sure. If you give me a piece of eight, that's money that grown-ups use. I know what a piece of eight is. Good for you. You can have a couple of dogs if you give me one. Please. Please? Can't you spare something for a couple of hungry kids? <laughs> Listen up, you little moocher. Let me tell you something. I don't like kids. I'm an honest businessman trying to make an honest living. I don't need 50 kids a day coming in and wasting my time trying to get me to give them free food. What about two kids? I guess, never mind. Hey, I know. Let's look for change in the outhouse across the way. Coins fall out of people's pockets when they sit down in there. They put it on a leg to keep you from walking off with it. <laughs> mm. Did you know? It says, return outhouse key when finished, or else. How much are those chicken foot fries? Chicken foot fries are two pieces of eight. How much are the scurvy dogs? Scurvy dogs are only a half piece of eight. So would that be a piece of 16? Chucky, stand over here for a minute. Nah, I want to get scurvy dogs. It's locked. 
I should get that key from the scurvy dog shack. Okay, I want to check out what else is around here first. Exhibit removed. Aww. I wonder if this is drinking water. Let's not go back there again. We'll just get yelled at. Yeah, let's get scurvy dogs instead. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, my aim was off because I was moving. to do that. I got the leg from the last kid who didn't bring back the key. Brutal. So it was a kid with a peg leg, huh? It's locked. Good thing I've got the key in my pocket. Oh, there's a to-do list. Buy scurvy dogs, find a coin. Okay. Is there a shortcut for inventory? Yeah, it's I. Good. You unlocked it. What does the middle mouse button do? Nothing! Ugh, what is this stuff? It smells the same as a toilet. It's gross. It isn't a piece of eight, but it's a round piece of metal about the same size and shape as a piece of eight. That's called a slug. It's like a fake coin. A fake coin is almost as good as a real coin. Chucky, why don't you look in the toilet? No way. You do it. Okay. <laughs> gross. I am not doing that again. I can stand up gross. But I missed what he said. Oh well. I don't see any coins, and I'm not putting my hands in that. I'm not sure how we can get scurvy dogs without any pieces of eight. We might have all we need. I don't think that guy can see very well. Now what? Can we get a couple of scurvy dogs? Sure. If you give me a piece of eight. I uh, I should probably put the the key back. Hey, look! I'm returning the key! You want a medal? What can we get with this? Oh, he put it in his mouth! Wait, enough for a couple of scurvy dogs if you want. Perfect! Take them, boy! What are you getting? What? Just kidding. Here's yours. Like, they say don't put money in your mouth because you don't know where it's been. I know where that's been. Ugh. Yum! What do you want to do now? I don't know. What do you want to do? I want to tie him up. Hey, uh, Chucky. Stand over here for a minute. No way. Can I go over here? Maybe over here. Hey, Chucky, get ready to run. I guess they don't like visitors. Let's go that way now. That's my friend D. Hey, D. Hey, Chucky, what are you jerk faces up to? We just got here. I'm making a list of stuff to do. Give me that. I'm an expert planner. Uh-oh. There. Perfect. See you around the park, Sidheads. Why do I feel like I should be concerned? Let's see. Mess around and explore. Check out the anchor. Beat Chucky in a race. Feed the duck. Add some sauce to my scurvy dog. Practice sword fighting. Find a four-leaf clover. Make a wish to the wishing well. Find our real parents. Oh boy. That's a cool anchor. <sighs> that just shows how little you know about anchors. This one's not a very good example. You'd know that if you read as much about anchors as I have. Did you know that anchors originally weren't designed to hold ships in place? 
they were used in combat. Shot from cannons as a grapple when you were trying to board another ship. They started making them bigger and bigger because they would do it. more damage that way. Then people noticed what happened when you missed the other ship and hit the sea bottom instead. The current bow-shaped design is actually less effective than the sharper V-shaped design that was popular last century. But the older design went out of fashion after sailors started to think the letter V was bad luck. You can still find the old kind around sometimes, but collectors have grabbed most of them. On a modern anchor, if you look close, you can tell that one side is a little larger than the other. That's to prevent what's called plummeting, where the anchor goes down too evenly and then it doesn't catch well on the bottom. The little flanges at the tips are at different angles to make it twist on the way down for the same reason. Most anchors these days are made of iron, and you have to recast them like twice a year because they rust. About 30 years ago, somebody thought of a way to get around that by making them out of wood instead. All kinds of people invested a lot of money in these wooden anchor companies. But the only way they could keep them from floating was to attach another anchor. And so they gave up and went back to the old way. The word anchor comes from the Sanskrit word nagara, meaning city. They're called that because when you stop in the middle of the ocean, it's like you've made port at an invisible city. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of an expert on anchors. I read a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we made it. Oh, really? So we can read all of that again. No, I'll spare you that. <laughs> That's a cool anchor. <sighs> that just shows how little you know about yep. anchors. This one's not a very good example. You'd know that if you read as much about anchors as I have. Did you know that anchors originally weren't designed to hold ships in place? They were used in combat. Okay. They started making them big then. The current but you can still on a modern ink that's to prevent the little most ink about 30. Oh, but the old word they're called. Yeah. 